So next, I want to talk in more detail about slides. Um, slides are scene states, and within Studio, you can have multiple slides on the scene level, as we can see here, or you can have slides within a component. Uh, so for example, on the speedometer, I've only got one slide, since I'm only animating the full range um, within the speedometer, uh, and I only need one slide to do that. Uh, the gear select component, on the other hand, if I double click into that component, uh, you'll notice that I've got slides set up for park, reverse, neutral, drive, and first and second gears. So going back to the scene level, um, I have slides set up to, uh, say for example, move this, uh, what we call a, a sub-application. Right now it looks like placeholder. Um, this is a sub-application. So if I want an event to um, when a key is pressed, I want this application to go to the right and I want this tachometer to uh, animate out of view, um, you simply can set up a slide to do that. So right now I'm on standard slide, nothing's happening. Um, on the to application right slide, um, what you'll notice as I play the animation uh, is that tachometer moves out of place while the sub application moves to the right. Uh, so when this slide um, is finished, so when the animation finishes, I've instructed the um, play mode to play through, play through to the app right slide. And the app right slide, uh, similar to the standard slide, is just simply a landing slide where nothing is happening. Um, so on this slide, our sub application is on the right, our speedometer is on the left, and if I wanted to go back to the standard slide, I set up a slide titled um, application to standard which moves that sub application back to center and animates my tachometer back into place. And so to illustrate the concept of master slide and non-master um, I'm actually going to open a new project and or start a new project. So up on the upper left if I click new uh, we're, we uh, start out with a new uh, new project we've got a slide on the left. Uh, within the scene we've only got one layer. We've got a light and a camera. Um, so this is a good place to start. So now I'm going to add a basic object to my scene. And first I'm going to add it to the scene outside of the master slide view. And then I'm going to add that same object to my scene within the master slide view to show the difference. So over here on the right under the basic objects tab um, I've got a series of components. So I'm going to click and drag a cylinder into my timeline. And I'm going to move the camera closer so we can get a better view of it. Okay, so if you look at the text on the cylinder, it's black. So this black text indicates that it is not associated with the master uh, slide view. Uh, so what that means is if I go to the slide palette and right click and choose new slide, that cylinder is not available on slide 2. And that is because I only added it to slide 1. So any subsequent slide that I add within my scene, um, it will not show that cylinder that I added in slide 1. However, if I want the cylinder to show up on slides 1, 2, and 3, um, and any additional slide that I create within my scene, I need to add this cylinder to the master slide view. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this cylinder and over here on the upper left, if you click on Edit Master, you'll be taken to the uh, Master Slide view as indicated by the blue um, slide icon. Uh, and over here on the basic objects, I'm just going to slide um, another cylinder into my scene. And as you'll notice, the text on the cylinder is blue. So that indicates that the cylinder is associated with the Master Slide view. If I leave the master slide view and click on slides 1, 2, and 3, you'll notice that the cylinder is available on each of those slides, and also any subsequent slide that I add to my scene as well. Now this master slide view is also useful for animating um, objects within your scene on a per slide basis. So for example, if I want this cylinder to animate over time, only on slide 3. I can add animation tracks to this cylinder only on slide 3. 
And if you look over here on the inspector palette, I have the uh, properties of position, rotation, scale, pivot, and opacity. I can right click on each of these properties and choose unlink property from master slide. Go ahead and do that for the rotation property as well. And if I click on the animation toggle for each of those properties, it adds a keyframe for position and rotation at uh, frame zero. If I move the playhead over to about seven seconds and adjust the position and rotation of the cylinder, you'll see that we've just got a simple animation uh, only available on slide three. Uh, if you go to slide four, there's no animation and also slide five there's no animation associated with this cylinder so only because uh, I added those animation tracks to slide three outside of the master slide view so really you could have an animation for this cylinder uh, a unique animation on slides one through five so five different animations for this one cylinder uh, depending on what slide you're on um, so that is very useful for um, adding different animation tracks to an object within your scene on a per slide level. So now I want to talk in a little bit more detail about the scene timeline and really just the timeline in general within your presentation. Um, really if you think about it there's multiple timelines within your presentation. Uh, they could be component level timelines or scene level timelines. On the scene level, uh, obviously we've got our timeline here. We can extend our assets to whatever length of time they need to be. Uh, so on this slide, they're two seconds. Uh, they're extended to two seconds to complete this animation. Um, on another slide, it's a static slide, so there's nothing happening so um, I only have the assets extended to about one second. If you need to go to a certain time in your timeline um, all you need to do is click on the go to time um, frame number uh, over here on the uh, left of these icons and just type in whatever time you need to go to. So for example if I want to go to 10 seconds I can just type in 10 seconds. My playhead will uh, be at the 10 second mark then I'm able to select my assets uh, for example, like my layers, and uh, hit the uh, right bracket key and extend those assets to that length of time. On the, on the uh, component level, so on the speedometer component, if I drill into that, you'll notice that it has its own timeline, and so then I'm able to lay down animation tracks for um, the objects within this component. So the, uh, the timeline in here is set up the exact same way as the scene level uh, timeline, except that um, it's independent of the scene level timeline. So it can do uh, other things, and they are really just independent of each other. And at runtime, the speedometer can be moving around and uh, doing all sorts of things. But the uh, timeline on the scene level on that particular slide could just be static and the playhead isn't doing anything. Um, so that's fairly obvious and pretty straightforward. Uh, let's talk about zooming in and out of the timeline. If you hold down the control and shift keys on your keyboard while simultaneously uh, scrolling the uh, wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out of your timeline, uh, which is really handy to get up close to keyframes that are maybe close together and maybe just literally frames apart from each other and you want to move them apart just slightly or copy them or move them um, that's a really handy feature um, but really that's that's the extent of uh, timelines and obviously compositing your layers over one another um, stack order is important so as in any photo editing program or video editing program uh, layer order uh, is certainly a big factor in making sure that things are going to be rendering properly and, uh, and so forth.